Let's continue our conversation that uh, we started a little bit earlier with political economist Patrick Bond. So uh, you heard us speaking about it in the interview. The EFF has released a statement saying that they are not shocked by Glencore's admission of foreign bribery and manipulation. The EFF also says they don't believe any of Glencore's business dealings in South Africa are above board. So to speak a little bit more on this, we are joined by the EFF national spokesperson, Sinao Tambo, who is in studio. Great to have you. Thanks for coming in. No problem. Yeah, so let's get your reaction straight away to that, that ruling. Look, as the economic freedom fighters, we're not shocked that what we have long identified as a multinational criminal syndicate in Glencoe has been involved in what can only be described in a global network of state capture. So they have established networks across the world in uh, South America and Africa, which will enable them to be able to extract the mineral resources of these countries through shady, dodgy dealings and capturing of states and capturing of state officials. So we are not shocked by this because we had long identified them as that type of character. But generally, the mining cartel of the world does not operate in any morally, moral or ethical manner in any country and state. So Glencoe has been implicated in securing oil contracts through bribes. They've been able to secure and uh, I mean, avoid government uh, audits through bribes. And of course, they've also been bribing judges in various nations in order to avoid lawsuits. This has been happening in Cameroon, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Venezuela, in Brazil, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which we have seen have been in a war, permanent state of war over the natural resources for over 60 to 70 years. Mm -hmm. So Glencoe is part and parcel of a global imperialist multinational companies which undermine the sovereignty of states, undermine the rule of law and undermine democracies by bribing them in order to ensure that they secure their wealth and their profit maximization efforts. And you've been saying this for a while. And I mean, one of your, your statements that came out yesterday is that you, you basically say that you are vindicated as constantly calling Glencore a criminal syndicate. That's, that's what you've been calling them. Absolutely. And their operations have been no different in South Africa. It's extremely naive to think that they would be bribing and meddling in politics and democracies and economic policy perspectives in Cameroon, in DRC, in Brazil, in Venezuela, but would have legitimate business dealings in South Africa. It's foolish. So the current president, Cyril Ramaphosa, had a 9.47% shareholding in Optimum Coal Mines, which was a subsidiary and intermediary of Glencoe. So they operate through creating shell companies and shell subsidiary intermediaries, which will facilitate these bribes and buy political influence. And Ramaphosa was part and parcel of that because he was the chairperson of Optimum at a certain point in time. And then he was uh, proceeded to be a deputy president who led the war room in an attempt to revitalize key state-owned entities and ESCOM in particular. And Glencoe is well known and well recorded to have been engaging in terrorist negotiation methods to increase their coal price sub uh, supply to ESCOM and at exorbitant prices while they were providing substandard coal. So South Africa is not immune to this. And the report from the Justice Department's uh, uh, financial uh, division uh, did say that how they operated in the countries that were named was no different to how they operated in the world generally. And our primary concern now is where are the banks of South Africa, which are so quick to shut down uh, the banking, uh, the banks or the accounts of people who are associated to corrupt criminal networks. Here is Glencoe. Where are the associates of Glencoe? Where are the bank accounts of Glencoe? When are they being shut down? Because our banks like to crusade and parade themselves as anti-corruption. But here's a global criminal today, and there's been no outcry from our financial sector. There's been no statement from the Department of Public Enterprises, no statement from the president who was a shareholder there and was leading the supposed revitalization of ESCOM, which has completely failed. So there's complete silence on this. The State of Capture Commission report of Zondo completely ignored the allegations against Glencoe and decided to focus solely on uh, Gupta-aligned entities. But because uh, Zondo only performs for factional interests, he could not go after Glencoe. He said nothing on Glencoe. We are waiting to see if he's going to call a press conference now, because that's, what, that's his style of operation to condemn Glen Glencore's global influences and call for further investigations on Glencore's business dealings in South Africa. There's complete silence. And uh, as the EFF were vindicated in saying that that is because of the capture of uh, the officials of this country. So you, you are now calling for a major investigation into this. I mean, we've got, you know, it's there, the rulings are there in black and white. And you are saying that you want particularly SARS as an organization to go back to, I, I think the date was, when was 2007. it? 2007 to present, look 
at their bank statements, look at the money flow and watch every cent and where it went. Have you formally asked them to investigate that? You're also calling on the NPA and the Hawks. So talk to us about have you taken that a step further? Absolutely. So the EFF is in the process of engaging and writing to the South African Revenue Services to collaborate with the National Prosecuting Authority, the Financial Intelligence Center and the Hawks to ensure that they investigate all of Glencore's business dealings through their intermediaries or subsidiaries here in South Africa. And that investigation must look at their bank tra banking transactions since 2007, because 2007 seems to be the period where a lot of these corrupt dealings have been targeted or isolated across the world. So we are calling on these institutions in South Africa to trace the banking uh, transactions of Glencore, and uh, that must firstly be preceded by freezing all of their accounts, if they have any, and all of the accounts of their associates to trace if there's been any interaction or transactions between Glencore and government representatives or government uh, entities or businesses aligned to politicians in South Africa, and to ensure that uh, this work is also done through uh, in working with telecommunications entities, because the report on what happened in the Democratic Republic of Congo is that an agent of uh, Glencore there was receiving calls and SMSs regarding a contractual situation or deadlock there in, in the DRC. And that was resolved through the agent telling uh, this Glencoe representative at an at international level that we need more ammunition if we are to get uh, the necessary political pressure to ensure that they get a favorable outcome in that contract negotiation process. And a few days after that, $500,000 uh, were deposited into the accounts of this representative and uh, their contractual uh, deadlock was resolved. So we must be able to look into those types of uh, communications, so telecommunications investigations, banking investigations, uh, tax investigations, because it is undoubtedly a fact that there might have been illicit financial removal of monies from South Africa to foreign and offshore accounts from the profits that Glencoe has made in this country. So we're calling for a very sophisticated type of investigation that must be independent from the president of South Africa, independent from the departments of South Africa, because they've been complicit in Glencoe's dealings in this country. I want to I elaborate a little bit more on, on, the, on the Zondo Commission. And we, we keep talking about the breezing over of Glencore. And one has to ask the question, why? Why was that something that was not taken very, very seriously? I mean, in, in every angle, because there are many angles that can be taken. Was it perhaps not the mandate of the Commission to go into that? Was the mandate just to look into the Gupta affairs and uh, state capture just with the Guptas? Or a bigger mandate. I mean, why do you believe that Glencore was just pushed aside and sort of like, you know, all right, we'll, we'll worry about that another day if we ever get to that? I think that the root of the ignoring of Glencore's uh, corrupt operations in South Africa is their relationship with Cyril Ramaphos. So we have long identified that the State of Capture Commission, which was headed by Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, has been treating Cyril Ramaphosa with kids' gloves. And as a result, that treatment is going to uh, infect all other forms of investigation. So. The mandate of the State of Capture Commission was to investigate state capture. And that was not solely limited to Gupta activity, but the corruption and the de degeneration of our state-owned entities in whatever way or form that could have happened. And Glencoe is part and parcel of that. I mean, they were trying to extort 8 billion rands worth of increases in their supply of substandard coal to ESCOP. So that, that should have been a core agenda of the State of Capture Commission as to why did they do that, what type of political influence were they relying upon in order for them to achieve those ends. I mean, they stopped supplying coal to the Andrina plant because of their terrorist methods of negotiation. So the State of Capture Commission didn't focus on them because of the, its alignment uh, to a previous shareholder and Ramaphosa, who was actually through Shanduka as well, having dealings with Optimum Coal and uh, Glencore as a whole. So it's the relationship that Glencore has with the political elite in this country that has allowed them to avoid accountability through a commission which has been pursuing just plainly factional mm -hmm. uh, types and uh, led types of investigations. A, a claim they denied. I mean, they did, they did sit there, they denied that, and we need to, we need to add that on. Um, economist Patrick Bond was basically saying, this is a Gupta 2.0 loading. D do you think so? Do you think we're going to have a whole investigation into Glencore now? I think Glencore, uh, it might be, I mean, it's a similar type of capture that we're referring to, but Glencore's one is at a much larger, nefarious and international scale. Yeah. And I think the forces that we're dealing with when one refers to a mining and oil giant at the level of Glencoe. I mean, to have influence in Venezuela, to have influence in Brazil, to have influence in the DRC. These are mineral-rich countries where billions and billions of dollars are being exchanged. So the capture has, has reached an international level when one speaks of Glencoe. And South Africa is just part and parcel of a much broader imperialist and global economic sabotage and undermining of democracies and 
the will of the people in the, in the quest for profit maximization. So it, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if South Africa has the capacity to be able to investigate Glencoe thoroughly. People in South Africa are bought for cheap tenders of roads to, to not fill potholes and cheap infrastructure projects. So Glencoe can buy this entire country if it needs be. So I'm not sure if we have the necessary requirement at the level of integrity by those who are leading even our state institutions, be it the NPA or SARS, to properly tackle a global imperialist giant like Glencoe. So we'll need to keep a watchful eye, all of us. The EFF will certainly ensure that the necessary pressure is there and the necessary accountability is there. But we must understand that we're dealing with a much global, much larger and nefarious international yeah. giant in terms of capturing states. In, in, indeed, and we understand that. But we, we look locally and we look at how we struggle every day. And we talk about ESCOM. We talk mm. about load shedding that we have had every single day implemented and it's just getting worse and worse. And many date this back to the years of Glencore, the manipulation of prices <clears throat> when it came to the cost of coal and many other issues. So there are a lot of unanswered questions. And this is what we're hoping to find the solutions to because people that are at the bottom of this need to be held responsible. Absolutely. I mean, we do agree. We must make an attempt to hold Glencore accountable. But looking at our state institutions and their incapacity to hold corrupt individuals accountable for even meager things like corruption relating to building stadiums, tackling Glencore is going to require a sophisticated state with integrity. And that's not what we have at the moment. It's going to require a state that has an appetite to fight corruption and with Sil Ramaphosa implicated in Glencore in terms of having been a shareholder, in terms of having been a chairperson of its board, is going to be an extremely difficult uh, situation and process. There's been no verifiable evidence of corruption being fought honestly or uh, forthrightly in South Africa. But we do encourage South Africans to actually have a deeper look into the Glencoe issue. It mustn't be a discussion that is brushed under the carpet. We must demand that key state institutions and departments that are involved in uh, mining in South Africa particularly, they must speak out. The Department of Public Enterprises must have a position because they're involved in petty scraps and debates with journalists and IOL and independent media, but they're not speaking on a global issue of states being captured by an entity like Glencoe. So we need them to speak up on things that are meaningful and not these factional debates and factional pursuits of people that are being done. We need our banks to show us that they are actually consistent. They must shut down all of the bank accounts of Glencoe if there are any and any of their associates who've operated in this country since 2007, pending the investigations we have called for. If they are really anti-corruption and pursuing an, an agenda of anti-corruption, not just an anti-black pursuit of fighting the enemies of the political elite of this country. Well, there you have an EFF national spokesperson, Sinaw Tambo, reacting to the Glencore findings and calling for tough investigations in South Africa with regard to Glencore and its operations.